Welcome to my channel. My name is Laperia, LP for short, and today I will be discussing or going over how I planned out my February 2021 budget. Two things to note about my budget in particular is that it's divided into two parts. Um, the first part is my bills or my electronic transactions, and the second part is my cash transactions. I do use the cash envelope system. And so in using that system, I do make sure that I budget and plan out the things that I'm going to be needing cash for and how much I'm going to be needing. Um, so I'll start off with my bills and what I am do, you know, my bills, how much I'm going to pay in bills and things of that nature. One important thing though, is my bills is, it's at the top of my budget. Um, and for the most part, my bills don't change. Um, my car note is the same every month. I tie 10% of what I make. Um, I do a rough estimate of my credit cards about how much I'm gonna spend um, in repayment. Right now, um, I have an exact number because my statements have came out but if they hadn't come out i just always try to do a rough estimate of similar to what i did the previous month that's also kind of how i do my cash transactions i look at what i've been doing i look at what i'm going to have going on throughout the month and then i just go from there so i'll start with my bills because that's the first thing that's on my particular budget um the first thing to look at for me is my credit cards now when i get paid um i get paid every month so my budget reflects a month worth of spending specifically because i get paid every month the first thing that i do when i get paid is pay my bills i do all the things that i can pay i don't have any of my bills on auto draft none of them um and that's kind of because Sometimes things may slip up or something may happen and I don't want it to be automatically coming out. And then, you know, my check is late and I thought I was going to get paid on the 1st. Now I'm going to get paid to the 10th and I have, you know, auto draft coming out on the 5th. And I'm kind of looking crazy like, where is my check? And I'm going to be mad regardless if I don't have bills coming out. But I just go ahead and do that also because some of my bills are due at different times of the month. And I like to go ahead and at the beginning of the month when I get paid, pay my bills. That way, you know, week two or week three of the month, if I look at my bank account, I see what's left. And I'm like, okay, that's my cushion money. Let me explain cushion money. I keep a small amount of money in my bank account every month. And that's just in case something happens. That's in case, you know, um, I'm buying something from someone and they only use cash app or something of that nature. If I'm going to explicitly have to use my debit card for a particular transaction, because sometimes, like I said, things come up around this time of the year, we're doing Girl Scout cookies. Um, and we have Valentine's Day is coming up. And so I may want to purchase something from a vendor and they're using Cash App or they're using PayPal to receive their payments. That way, when I want to do that, um, I can use it from the money that's left in the bank. And sometimes, you know, if, if something happens, I get stuck on the side of the road. Even though I have an emergency fund, I have a miscellaneous fund for auto expenses and, and things of that nature. If I don't have enough money or if I don't have that particular um, envelope on me because I typically don't carry envelopes that I don't need, that way I don't overspend. So if I don't have my auto expense on me, if I have you know $50 in the bank set to the side, if something happens and I need something or I need someone to help me with something, at least I'll have that as a backup instead of having to dig into my savings. Um, so that is what I call cushion money. But again, let's hop into my bills. So like I said, when I first get paid at the beginning of the month, I tithe. Whatever the 10% of um, my check is when it comes into me, I tithe that. That automatically comes off so that way that's handled. Then I move on to my other expenses. I move on to my credit cards. I have two. I have two credit cards. And um, 
I go ahead and I pay those at the beginning of the month, whatever the minimum balance is. I have one card that I don't even really use. And so um, most of the time I pay that off because like I said, I don't really use. And then I have another one that I use more frequently because I get, you know, 5% um, cash back with my card. And um, sometimes they have special things going on, especially Christmas just ended and they had this whole hoopla of like, you get 5% cash back if you shop at these stores. And so I was going to be doing the Christmas shopping anyway, particularly at those stores. So I was like, why not get the 5% cash back and then use that 5% cash back they gave me and pay the bill. So um, I do things like that. But for my credit cards, roughly for both of them, I spend about $100 a month. I budget for that. And then student loan. I'm currently paying on a student loan for a class I took over the summer when I was in undergrad. And it's about $40 a month. That's what they gave me as the payment. It's a very, um, like, I don't, I can't even remember how much the loan amount was, but it was a very small amount. And so I paid that. And then I have my gym membership, which is $30. I do pay now to go to the gym um, every month. I was going to a trainer, but that was starting to take a financial toll and then an emotional toll because honey getting up there early was not, we weren't getting along. So, I decided that I was going to have to pump myself up, get some accountability for myself. And I do pay the $30 for the all access to the gym so I can go everywhere, do everything, do the classes and things like that that my gym offer. It's $30 a month. I currently have student Apple Music. Um, and so that's $5.34 a month. And then I have streaming services. I use Hulu and I use Netflix. And with those two combined, my total is $25.31. I'm considering um, getting four screens for my Netflix because I use it. My mom, my sister, and my brother use my Netflix. And um, I be having to tell them, they gotta, you got to hop off, honey, if you ain't paying the bill. So um, I am considering going up because I think it's only 2 or $3 more a month. And that's a small price to pay, in my opinion, for everybody in the house to be able to utilize Netflix because it seems to be something that they are enjoying, especially now that we're quarantined a lot. That's kind of what we do. We just watch a lot of TV. And so Netflix, it's not a necessity, but um, if I can steal that $4 from somewhere else down the line, that's a that's an expense I'm willing to take. And then I have two car insurances. I have two cars. Um, one of the car insurances I pay every month is for an older model Toyota and it's $57 and like 15 cent. I pay that every month, but then I also have, um, insurance on the car that I currently drive and I pay that up every six months. And so what I do is it's roughly $615 at the end of six months. So I take out a hundred dollars every month. Um, and I just, put it in a uh, miscellaneous card or envelope. That way, at the end of the six months, I'll have roughly $600 that I will already have set to the side. And I just deposit it back into the bank and pay it. That's easy for me or easier for me because I was previously just putting it in my savings. And then when the time came for me to actually do what the money was there for me to do, which is spend it and um, pay my car insurance, I would get super discouraged. Like, why do I, why, why do I have to do this? Like, ain't nobody else out there in the world that can pay this for me. Like, really? I'm going to have to take $600 out of my account. But, I mean, it's a blessing to have the money. That's what it was there for. But it still kind of felt like I was cheating myself because I was dipping into my savings, even though the reason that I put it there was so that I could use it. You get what I mean? Um, and that feeling and that um, realization is what made me start really using my sinking funds and honing in on my sinking funds, which I will discuss a little bit later when I get to my cash envelopes. So once I get there, we'll discuss, you know, what my particular sinking funds are, but I keep my car insurance in my bills and electronic transactions, because even though I take the money out and I'm going to put it back in, it's an, it's an electronic transaction. Girl, what? It's an electronic transaction because at the end, I'm still going to have to pay it, you know, online. And the last thing that I have in my um, bills or for my bills is my car note. So, um, like I said, I pay all of my bills 
at the beginning of the month except for my uh car insurance that is the only one that i don't pay at the beginning of the month and that's because it comes out on the 8th and so because it comes out so early to the to the beginning of the month when i get paid i go ahead and i let that be automatic also because it's only 57 dollars I don't feel so bad if something comes up and I have to, you know, dig into my savings for $57. But some of these other expenses, you know, the car insurance is $100, my car note, things like that. I don't, <laughs> I love to have my savings. I don't want to touch it. And so for bigger amounts, I don't want to have to go into my savings. Because even though technically, yes, that's what my savings is there for. If something comes up, if there's an emergency, that's what I'm supposed to use it for. I still don't want to use it for that. So um, I just go ahead and pay them, like I said, at the beginning of the month. That way, like I said, also, closer to the middle of the month, I kind of know what I'm working with. I know uh, two things, like I said, if I have cushion money, but also if I have an excess of cushion money. So like if I have like $200 of cushion money, after I paid all of my bills, I know something is off. You know, where did I not take out enough money? Where did I not do something that I was supposed to have done? And if it turns out that my only error is that I didn't save enough, then I just put a little bit more into my savings. Um, but also to note, I do other things. I have a nine to five, but I also um, tutor on the side and I drive waiter from time to time. So I have other sources of income. And I try to also, when that money comes in, go ahead and either divvy out where it's going to go or I go ahead and put it in my savings. The reason that I don't account for that money up front is because it's not fixed. My job right now is salary. So every month, the amount is going to be the same. The only thing that's going to change really in my budget is the things that I use in cash transactions. My bills, they don't change from month to month. My car note does not change. How much I pay in insurance changes every six months. But even then, it only goes down by like a dollar, maybe two. So everything for the most part, nothing shifts in my my um, bills. So I can keep that how it is and I don't have to worry about that. But my real challenge, or not challenge, but I get to get really creative when it comes to um, my cash envelopes. Uh, there's only one thing in my cash envelope that stays the same and that's the light bill because I pay a certain amount of our home light bill. I live at home. So I pay a certain amount of the light bill every month. That amount doesn't change. It's going to be the same. But I use it as a cash transaction because I do pay my light bill in cash. And the reason for that is because um, where I live in Mississippi, my pharmacy also has a um, bill paying service at the back. So at the front, there's a pharmacy and at the back, you can pay bills for like AT&T and energy and things of that nature. So most of the time, my light bill is due around the same time that I have to refill my prescriptions. So I just kill two birds with one stone and go on in and pay my, um, you know, pay that bill while they're getting my prescription ready. So that is my first. Um, my first tr cash transaction is my light bill and I put that at the top of my budget because it's technically a bill. Everything else, there are extra things, things that I wanna do, things I like to, I mean, gas and groceries are necessities, but they're not bills per se. So after my light bill, I have gas. Um, I usually spend around $60 in gas a month. That leaves me with roughly $20, uh, not $20, Lord, mad. But, um, <laughs> I spend roughly um, 15 to $20 in gas every month. But also, I usually have a little bit left over. Um, sometimes my mom may use my car or my siblings may want to use my car and they'll give me gas money. And when something like that happens, I just put that to the side. So I always down how much I'm going to spend on gas because um, for the most part, I always have an excess from another part. Next are my um, groceries and my eating out. I separate the two, even though they're both food expenses. I separate groceries from eating out because in my opinion, they're not the same thing. Getting groceries, that's when you go to the store, you purchase the things that you want to buy so that you can cook at the house. For that, I spend about $50. Getting groceries, in my opinion, is they're not the same, you know? Getting groceries is when you want to purchase something from the store, Walmart, Kroger, Publix, if you have one, uh, Whole Foods, and you go home and you cook your meal. 
Eating out is when you go out with your friends or when you take yourself out on a me day. That is eating out. I spend fifty dollars eating out and fifty dollars for groceries. Um, I try not to spend the whole fifty dollars on eating out because fifty dollars for four weeks that's a lot. That's like ten dollars a week, and technically that's not a lot. But I try to limit myself because I know that if I have like a hundred dollars in there, I'll go crazy. I'll never cook. I would just eat, 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 eat. And that is not what I need to do. So that's another way to put like a check and balance system in for myself to make sure that I am eating properly and I am doing the things that I need to do when it comes to my health. So I try to spend $50 on groceries and $50 on eating out. Now you may think $50 on groceries, that's not a lot. It's not. Here's the thing. I am a budgeter. I'm a coupon queen. I look at the sales. I try to find ways to, you know, get what I need and get what I want on a budget. If you have a Sam's near you, I always go to Sam's to get my chicken thighs. I love chicken thighs. They're the juiciest part of the chicken, in my opinion. I'm not a cook, so don't quote me. But thighs are the juiciest and most flavorful part of the chicken, in my opinion. I can go to Sam's and get a pack of chicken thighs that comes with like 12 to 14 thighs for $5. Maybe 6 but most of the time it's between five to seven dollars okay so with five to seven dollars i've gotten 12 pieces of chicken i don't need but five because on the weeks um that i meal prep i don't meal prep but for five days and the other time my mom cooks dinner or um something of that nature i may go out to eat with my boyfriend so i really don't focus a lot on dinner because like i said why when somebody else cooking for me or like i said i go out to eat with my boyfriend or i use my um food budget but you know you could go to sam's you can get that five dollar pack of chicken or seven dollar pack of chicken it's 12 and even if i decide this month or this week that i'm going to um have chicken for every meal or eat a lot of chicken i don't typically eat a lot of chicken but if i decide you know okay i'm gonna cook 10 pieces of chicken I've still gotten a week's worth of meat protein for $7 and I still only have to focus on getting vegetables and things of that nature, fruit and vegetables. So I, I figure out how to make it stretch. I try to use things that are on sale. Um, like I said, I do live at home. So sometimes my mom may buy something that she knows that I really like. Like she may come in and have a whole bunch of bell peppers. I love bell peppers. And so that's one thing that I don't now have to try to find an expense for or, you know, pay for because she's handled that for me. But a lot of times what I do, like I said, as I just budget, I kind of try to look around and see, you know, what I can use. I don't always use fresh um vegetables sometimes i use the frozen bag of se seasoned blend why because it's cheaper to just buy a bag of seasoned blend and use that for two three weeks than it is to constantly be buying bell peppers and onions it may not be as fresh but it is a little bit cheaper and if you season everything right who knows the difference but you because you cooked um so i do that with my groceries and then i have a household fund and an entertainment fund my household fund is for things that i need for the house deodorant soap uh tissue things of that nature is my household fund it's 20 dollars a month for the most part i buy everything in bulk when i can so a lot of times i don't have to buy like toilet paper paper towels and things of that nature because I bought everything that I needed in bulk. And so when I get close to running out, I roll everything over. So if I put $20 in my household budget this month and I only use five, that $15 rolls over to the 20 that I put next month. So now I have $35 in my household budget. So when it does come time for me to use that money or need it, it's there. I use it as a sinking fund. And my entertainment, like when my friends want to go out my family wants to go out something of that nature that's what i use entertainment for pre-pandemic i used to stay running that entertainment budget up because my friends always wanted to go somewhere we were always trying to live life and have a great time but now um my entertainment budget really doesn't get used that much because i'm not going anywhere nothing's really open there's nothing really to do but i do try to keep at least 40 dollars in my entertainment budget that way if something comes up i'm available when um you know my siblings if they want to go somewhere i have the money to take them wherever they want to go or do whatever they want to do um but i also use that um to go back that household budget sometimes i buy my 
personal things out of there, which is what household is for. It's for my personal items. And when I say personal things, I mean candles, um, body scrubs, face masks, things that I use when I'm doing my self-care routine. I may um, decide or I may see a new scrub that I want to try out. I look at my household budget. If I got a little money in there, there it is. And that way I've taken care of myself. Um, and if I'm taken care of, the house is taken care of. See how that works? But um, my last couple of things are the kids' allowance. So I give my brother and sister an allowance every month. Um, that's just because when I was a kid, I didn't have no allowance. My mom was not giving out money like that. And I know the struggle. So I try to, to the best of my ability, help them out. Um, so I give my siblings an allowance. And then I have a date night account or a date night budget. Uh, for me and my boyfriend, um, for the most part, I try to do at least one good big date um, a month. Sometimes I do more, especially um, like now it's February. Who, you know, you, you know, you got to do something nice for your significant other during Valentine's Day. I mean, most people think it's a female's um, holiday, but it's not. Me and love, love too. So... I usually have like $50 in my budget for my date night. I think I went up to $30 this month. And I went up because, like I said, it's Valentine's Day. And I do want him to know and understand that he's appreciated. And I do want to make sure that I, you know, he going to do something nice for me. So I try to make sure that I do something nice for him, especially around this time of the year. After that, I have a seeking fund for auto expenses. And what I use that for is like when I need a tire rotation or an oil change, it's getting close to the time for me to get my oil change. I put $20 in my auto expense budget this month, and that should put me at about $75. And so when I go to get my oil change and my tires rotated, I just take that money out of there instead of taking it out of my savings or trying to budget $75 out of one month, I spread it out throughout, you know, the course of several months. I also have a, um, excuse me, I have a personal maintenance fund. And what that's for, like when I want to go get my feet done, if I want to get my nails done, if I want to get my eyebrows done, you know, something like that. I take that out of my personal maintenance fund. I also, like if, if there's a month where I don't want to get my feet done or I'm not going to need to get my feet done for some reason, if, you know, like it's Valentine's Day, um, I want my feet done. I want to look nice when I go out. So um, I'm going to make sure that I get my feet done. But if I didn't need to get my feet done or if I didn't need to get my nails done or something of that nature, my personal maintenance would be what I would use for my healthcare routine. So like I said, the same way that I would use the household, if I see something out that I like, a scrub, um, a new exfoliator or something of that nature where I would use that for the household, I may slide that over to personal maintenance. Um, and then I have, after personal maintenance, I have my birthday and Christmas. So I have a lot of birthdays coming up. You know, everybody has birthdays, friends, and they want to get gifts for and things of that nature. And so for me, instead of, like I said, just waiting until the month of and be like, oh my gosh, I want to spend, I like, I want to get them this gift and it's $80, but I'm going to do, instead of trying to do that in one month, I just put money aside every month so that when the birthday comes up, I have a little bit of money set to the side to go ahead and do that. That fund is about $20. And it's $20 because for the month of February, I only have one birthday. And I already know what I'm going to get them. So I didn't have to, you know, try to figure it out. I have a birthday coming up in March. And then after March, I don't have any birthdays until June. So I have roughly three months of putting money to the side for birthdays. Now, I'm not saying that what I have in the birthday fund is going to cover everything, but it is going to be used to help alleviate some of the pressure when the month comes. So I don't have to try to budget out um, so much money and take so much from being able to put it in my savings. And after birthdays, I have Christmas. And I think I put about $20. Yep, I put $20 in Christmas um, and 15 in birthdays. Sorry about that. But I put 15 in birthdays and $20 in Christmas. And that way, when Christmas comes up, I have a little money already set to the side. Now, one thing I do 
when Christmas is getting close, I start putting extra money in the Christmas fund. So around August, I'll start, I'll go from putting $20 in to probably 60. That way, when I get to Christmas, um, I'll have that money set to the side and I'll be able to get the decorations that I like or get the gifts for my siblings and my family that I, you know, really want to get them without having to try to cram it all in. Those are the expenses that I have for the month of February. I do want to note that I play around with my cash. I take out a certain amount. And I mean, I don't play around with the amount. Whatever I say I'm gonna give, that's what I give. But I do try to be flexible with certain things. Um, my entertainment budget, I try to be flexible with my entertainment, flexible with my date night, flexible with birthdays and things of that nature because things do come up. I also want to note um, two major things. This is my budget. This is how I budget. This is how I plan out my money. This is how I put things together. This works for me. Your budget, what you do, how you do it, it's gonna be different. And that's okay. This is just, my channel is just a place for you to get ideas. It's a place for you to see what I do, how I do it, for us to communicate, for us to bounce ideas off of one another and gain some financial literacy through one another because we need each other. And so I just wanna be an outlet and have the ability to speak with you about things. I use cash envelopes and I make cash envelopes. If you want that information, um, it'll be down below on how you can purchase cash envelopes. It'll also be down below on how you can purchase um, an Excel budget. I love to use Excel budgets, but that's me. That's how I like to do it. And the reason I like to use Excel budgets is because I like being able to just put a figure in there and then, then it do everything else for me. I want to make budgeting as easy as possible for myself because I don't want to do it. If I'm honest with you and if I'm definitely honest with myself, I don't want to budget. It's not something that I want to do, but it's necessary. It's necessary to make sure that I make it from month to month and have a little bit left over. I like to travel. I'm not really doing a lot of travel right now because we're in a pandemic, but I like to travel. I like to eat. I like to buy clothes. I like to have fun. So I try to make sure that I make my money work for me. And that leads me to number two. You cannot hear me. Come here. Come here. You cannot out budget the fact that you don't make enough money. A lot of people think, oh, well, the reason that you don't, can't do these things, the reason I can't go out, the reason that my friend, no, no, no. It's not because they're not budgeting. It's not because you're not budgeting properly. You cannot change your necessities. Lights, water, gas, those are necessities, okay? Lights, water, gas, clothes, toiletries, things of that nature, those are necessities. You cannot budget your way out of not having enough money. If your necessities, your bills, the things that you need to make it from day to day, week to week, month to month, equal up to be $1,500 and you don't make but a thousand, you can't out budget that. Now you can get a second job, but who wants to do that when you could just pay me more? And there are other things that you can do to gain that money. However, if you don't have it, you don't have it. There's there's not a magic way. You can't wave a magic wand and say, well, it's going to appear. No, you can trust God, but you can't just wave a magic wand and then say, okay, the money is going to be there. So if you're in that situation, don't get discouraged. Um, let's find some creative ways to, to make things work, but you cannot out budget the fact that you don't make enough money. I want to thank you guys so much for coming in and um, clicking on this video, sitting through this video, watching it. I hope that you all enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I do have a lot more content coming. Um, and I do want to note this setup here. I'm going to have to put this in my March budget because I actually rented this space, this setup, um, from this lady in... Pearl, Mississippi, Miss Robin. I'll have her information linked down below as well, where if you're in the Jackson, Mississippi metro area and you want a YouTube or you want to create content of any sort, it doesn't have to be for YouTube. It could be an Instagram post. If you want that and you can't, I can't, I could not figure out how to put, I don't, I don't know where to get this stuff from. So if you want somebody to help you with that or need somebody to help you with that, she's great with um, things of that nature. If you all want to see how I stuff my cash envelopes and a process of me like going into the store and actually using that $50 grocery budget, 
let me know down below. I will be so happy, so happy to um, show you guys that process. Please make sure that you subscribe, like this video, comment down below. And again, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you. Bye.